Alright, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Turn to discuss further into uh, techniques of integration. And now look at integration of rational functions by the method of partial fractions. Uh, in my earlier videos, I went over partial fractions and partial fraction decomposition. So make sure to watch those. Uh, basically, one method of integrating rational functions, which are simply ratios of polynomials, is by expressing them as a sum of simpler functions called partial fractions that we already know how to integrate. To illustrate the method, consider the following. Let's write a um, function like this, 2 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 2. So now if we were to add these up, we get, well, first to add these up, we multiply by the common denominator. In this case, let's create one where it's x minus 1 times x plus 2. So this left side will top times the top and bottom by x plus 2. So now we have an x minus 1, now x plus 2 right here. Now we subtract 1 and then times this we have an x plus 2 here. So times the top and bottom by x minus 1. So we have the same common denominator. So now add these up. So we get 2, just multiply this out, 2x plus 4 minus right here x minus uh, uh, this is going to be plus plus 1 all divided by well x minus 1 x plus 2 that's a common denominator now add these up and expand this by multiplying this uh, out like that etc we get basically um, we get right here 2x minus x that's just going to be x 4 plus 1 is 5 divided by now we have an x squared minus, yeah, x squared, and there's going to be a 2x plus 2x, there's going to be a minus x, and now the, the we have right here a minus 2. So this equals 2, yeah, this basically equals 2x plus 5, just simplify this, x squared plus, uh, yeah, this is going to be x minus 2. So what we've just shown is that this equals to this right here, so 2 over x minus 1, equals 1 over x plus 2. Yeah, and I'll just circle this right here. So now what this means is now if we have an in integral with this function, we could actually write it as this, so decompose it into this partial fraction. And we would do that because, well, we know how to do the integral of this and this not necessarily. And so basically now if we reverse the procedure, we can see how to integrate the function of the right side of the equation. For example, if we had an integral of x plus 5, x squared plus x minus 2 dx, so now this right here is equal to, well, integral, just replace it with this left side. So 2 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 2 dx. And now solving this, this is actually uh, the integral of this one right here. That's just going to be, well, ln, we're going to have a 2 times the by ln of, well, x minus 1. And then, then we subtract right here ln of x <coughs> plus 2. Yeah, and this is an absolute value right there. And then we add a constant. Yeah, and you can see uh, the proof of uh, the integral uh, or the derivative of ln or the integral of uh, 1 over x um, to get to ln in my earlier video, also in the video link below. So yeah, basically doing this method, we could quickly solve or break it down into functions we know and then solve for the integral. So yeah, to recap on partial fractions and well, to see how the method of partial fraction works in general, let's consider a uh, rational function f of x equals to p of x divided by q of x, where p and q are just polynomials, so that's just the definition of a uh, rational function. Yeah, and basically, like I showed in my earlier videos on partial fractions, it is possible to express the function f, or the rational function f, as a sum of simpler fractions, provided that the degree of p is less than the degree of q. For example, this polynomial has a uh, power that's less than the, the, than the power of q. For example, x cubed, with the bottom has to have an x to the power of 4, at least. So such, uh, yeah, such, um, yeah, such a rational function is called proper, and also I went over these in my early videos as well. So now recall that if we have our polynomial p of x is equal to just to show you what the degrees are, a n. These are just coefficients times x power of n 
plus a n minus one, x n minus one, plus keeps going on and on till we get well a one x so until it gets to all the way to the bottom and then plus well a zero and x power of zero which is just uh, equals to one so we just erase this. So if we have this where yeah, we're basically a n, the first one is not equal to zero, then the degree of p is n, because that's that's the uh, largest polynomial. And then we would write degree of p equals to n, so write deg. Yeah, so now if f is improper, that is basically the degree of p, I'll just add to the dictionary, is greater than or equal to degree of q, then we must basically take the preliminary step of dividing q into p by long division until a remainder r of x is obtained, such as degree of r is less than degree of q, and the division statement for that is just f of x equals to p over x over q of x. This equals two, now we have uh, the remainder. Yeah, we, then we have, well, this is what we get, then plus the remainder rx and over q of x. So now s is a polynomial, so these are just polynomials. Yeah, and just write that down, where s and r are polynomials. So this is the result of the division, and then this is the remainder that you couldn't uh, divide further. Yeah, and basically, uh, the partial fractions uh, will be solved or determined using the methods in my earlier videos on partial fraction decomposition, and I'll do examples in later videos, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, that's all for today. This is just a quick intro to the integration of rational functions by partial fractions. So stay tuned for uh, my examples that I'll go over. Anyways, that's all for today. Yeah, that's all for today. If you learn from this, uh, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.